Let's have a look at the consumer's optimization problem when she has a cop Douglas utility function. So her utility function is u of x1 comma x2 is x1 raised to some constant that we call a multiplied by x2 raised to another constant that we call b. These constants are strictly positive to guarantee well-behaved preferences. We want to maximize this utility function subject to p1x1 plus p2x2 equal to m. Let's find MRS for an arbitrary bundle x1 comma x2. Remember MRS is minus mu1 over mu2. mu1 is the partial derivative of u with respect to x1. We have x1 to the a, so a goes in front, x1, and then we take it down one unit, x2 to the b. mu2, partial u, partial x2 is x1 to the a. Now the b goes in front and we do x2, b minus 1. So we have mrs equal to minus ax1 to the a minus 1, x2 to the b divided by bx1 to the a, x2 to the b minus 1. Remember the power rule? If I have x to the a divided by x to the b, I do this one minus this one, a minus b. In my expression here, I have x1 to a minus 1 here, and I have x1 to the a here. So this becomes minus a over b, x1 to the well, a minus 1 minus a, or minus 1. Similarly for x2, I do b minus b minus 1, and that is 1. I don't need to write that. So I can write MRS like this, or if you like, we can write it as minus a x2 over b x1. For a bundle to be optimal, we need to set MRS equal to minus p1 over p2. So we have minus a x2 over b x1 equal to minus p1 over p2. Remove the minus sign, put p2 up here and b x1 up here, and we have a p2 x2 equal to b p1 x1. This is one of the equations that the optimal bundle must satisfy, and this is the second one. We have a system of two linear equations and you can solve this system any way you like. For example, if I divide both sides by b here, I have p1x1 equal to a p2x2 over b. If I plug this one into the budget constraint, p1x1 a p2x2 over b plus p2x2 equal to m then I can factor p2x2 a over b plus 1 equal to m. This 1 is the same as b over b, so this part here is a plus b over b. From this we have p2x2, just multiply both sides by b over a plus b, b over a plus b times m, and then divide by p2, and we have x2 star equal to b over a plus b times m over p2. Just by symmetry of this problem, x1 star must be equal to a over a plus b times m over p1. If you don't like this symmetry argument, just remember we found that p1 x1 over here needs to be a p2 x2 over b, which is a over b, p2 times x2 is b over a plus b times the p2 cancels. The b cancels and we have this result. I think these two formulas are useful to have in handy because many microeconomic problems are based on the cobb douglas utility function. Let's just quickly see how you would get the same result if you did it through the Lagrangian. So lx1 x2 is x1 to the a, x2 to the b, minus lambda, p1x1 plus p2x2 minus m. Partial l, partial x1 is 
a x1 a minus 1 x2 to the b minus we have an x1 here so lambda p1 equal to 0 partial l partial x2 is b x1 to the a x2 to the b minus 1 then we have an x2 here so minus lambda p2 should be 0 move lambda p1 and lambda p2 over on the right hand side do the left hand side a x1 a minus 1 x2 to the b over the left hand side of the second equation it's an a x2 b minus 1 lambda cancels and it's p1 over p2 and this simplifies to exactly the same thing as setting mrs equal to minus p1 over p2 this is a x2 over b x1 equal to p1 over p2 use this with the equation of the budget line and you will find exactly the same solution here is the summary of optimal choice when we have an arbitrary cobb douglas utility function u is equal to x1 to the a plus x2 to the b mrs is equal to minus ax2 divided by bx1 optimal consumption of good one is x1 star equal to a over a plus b times m over p1 x2 star is equal to b over a plus b times m over p2 you can see that if a is equal to b then x1 star is one half m over p1 and x2 star is one half m over p2 for example if p1 is 2 p2 is 1 m is 40 a is 1 and b is 1 then x1 star is 1 half times 40 over 2 which is 10 and x2 star is 20.